Wow. Well, that was such a warm and kind introduction. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Jason Silva, as you guys know. Some people know me for hosting Brain Games on the National Geographic Channel, which is all about our perceptions and also our misperceptions of reality. I do believe that reality is coupled to perception, so if you shift perception, you shift reality. And this is definitely a big interest of mine. We have the mental capacity to ponder the infinite, seemingly capable of anything. Yet we are housed in heart-pumping, breath-gasping, decaying bodies. We are simultaneously gods and worms. When I became aware of this existential conundrum, when I first apprehended the idea of mortality, sent me on a freaking panic attack of cosmological proportions, needing to find some way to address this disjointment. I believe it was Dostoevsky who said that man needs to find a way of bridging the finite and the infinite. We have to find a way of blasting new tunnels between the mind and the other, to commune with something larger and greater than ourselves, to create grand narratives and stories that allow us to move beyond what we are. Why not? This is the human project. This is the human enterprise. This is the human story. We didn't stay in the caves. We haven't stayed on the planet. Hopefully, we won't even stay within the limitations of our biology, right? Alan Harrington said, any philosophy that accepts Death must itself be considered dead. Its questions meaningless, its consolations worn out. We must never forget we are cosmic revolutionaries, right? Not stooges conscripted to advance a natural order that kills everyone. We are unfinished, and we are just getting started. So then this has turned into a passion for creativity. This has turned into a passion for human imagination. And it's also turned into a passion for technology, right? Because technology is the embodiment of human creativity in the world. Technology is the literalization of human imagination in the world. Technology is how we turn the human mind inside out and how we impregnate the world with mind. Anxiety is just energy, you know? And Human beings are, are prone to negative emotions, I believe, and prone to anxiety simply because we are the descendants of the humans that were the most vigilant 100,000 years ago in the savannas of Africa. Like the amygdala is the part of the brain that is like the alarm system. I feel like we had a little bit of an overactive amygdala. And the reason is that the humans that were the most vigilant survived the attacks of the animals. The humans that were like, chill, they got eaten. So again, we are descended from very, very neurotic and anxious beings, okay? I think today we have used our tools and our technologies to make this world infinitely safer, no doubt. But um, I think we carry with us this proneness to anxiety, to make drama and make problems out of things that are not problems. Um, what I have tried to do is simply Again, to see anxiety through this lens of just energy. And it's like, okay, I need to direct this energy. Like if I'm anxious about something that is not necessary to be anxious about, go for a run, write in your journal, like make music, like be creative, you know, like, like channel that energy. And then what happens is you dissipate it and then you feel better. And then with a, with a, with a better perspective, you can actually wonder if what you were anxious about was really necessary or not. It gives you a better perspective. Behind all our tools is this capacity to imagine what is not yet here. So I think we are the tool of the future. You know, Terence McKenna says that human beings are a coral reef-like animal, an extruder, which means a producer of technological material. We take in physical matter of low organization 
It goes through the filters of the mind and it comes out as like smartphones and airplanes. We transform matter and make it more highly organized so that then it can have transcendent effects. You know, how much is an airplane weigh? I mean, how many millions of tons is an airplane weigh? If it, if that matter, if the physical materials of an airplane were not organized together the way, in the shape of a plane, then that would be almost impossible to move. And yet, arranged in a certain style, it's a machine that can fly it on its own into the sky. So the way we put materials together, that's our tool, that's our capacity. And that's, I think, what will be our capacity in the future.